Welcome back to Not Just Another Jessica. I'm Jessica. Today I'm coming to you from our homeschool room and we're going to be talking about how we do homeschool preschool and kindergarten here at home. And we do our homeschool preschool and kindergarten for roughly a hundred dollars a year. It's really affordable to do at home. It's very easy. So let's get started and talk about how we do that. The three main areas I'm going to talk about are the core curriculums we use, the extras that I purchase, and then the free extras that I use as a way of educating the kids a little more but also keeping them busy while they're here at home with you. So for core curriculum, I've been using the same core curriculum with our homeschool preschool and kindergartners for quite some time and the curriculum that I like to use is the Abeka curriculum. This year I have a daughter who's doing K-4 and I have that curriculum here, but we've also used K-5 in the past. K-4 is a four-year-old kindergarten, K-5 is a five-year-old kindergarten. So you can decide which one you want to order based on the age of your child or by looking through the curriculum online and seeing what the content is. The K-4 kit is very basic and that is part of what I like about it. I do not like for school to stretch on for long periods of time for little ones here at home. They need to be active and a lot of the ways that they learn is by play and exploration. So I want the time where we're sitting down and doing um, direct instruction or one-on-one -on -one work to be short and to be fun and to be engaging so that they can be done and then move on with the rest of their day. I'll show you what came in our Abeka kit. What we got was, they have an ABCs and one, two, threes book. And it's just um, basic counting and number writing, uh, identifying sounds, doing blend ladders with basic short vowel sounds. So they work through this. There's counting, identifying the amount of items, more word blends. And they'll see these word blend ladders when they get to their word blend book that they use in kindergarten and first grade and I think possibly second. So this is a good introduction to them for something that they're going to continue to see in the curriculum. So they work through this throughout the year. We also got the manuscript writing book. And you can choose whether you want manuscript or cursive. And I'll be doing manuscript this year and then I'll switch to cursive next year. I like to start my kids at five years old with cursive. That way they have a really good understanding of it. And this is just a basic handwriting instruction book. Now, when teaching this, I don't buy the teacher's kit, mainly because I've taught this many times and I have a lot of my own supplies at home. Uh, it costs roughly, I think, $80 to get the teaching supplies kit and it has lesson plans and uh, flashcards and other supplies. And if it's your first time homeschooling, that could be really helpful to have those daily lesson plans and suggestions. I myself taught before I started homeschooling and I've taught homeschool at home. This is my fourth time doing the um, kindergarten, so I kind of already know what I like to do. I don't buy the teacher's kit. I've given mine away to a younger homeschooling mom. But if you're new to it, I would recommend picking that up or at least maybe going to your favorite used bookstore and reading over it and seeing if it's something that you think would help you. So these are the two books of that. And then once they get a little bit further along, they start doing the writing with phonics, K4. And if we look inside of this, it's more um, letter sounds, letter writing. They just work their way through and practice a little each day. Get that letter and sound recognition. And along with this book, comes a set of little readers in, or with this kit, this is the student kit for K4, comes a set of little readers and they're just small simple paper books. They look like this and there's a set for the year. There's got 11 of them maybe. So you get a little pile of those and they have stories in them about animals that use basic words, a lot of short vowel sound words and simple sight words. And then they have the little book to read in color. And in this you start off with basic letter sounds of the vowels and then you work up to um, just a lot of two letter blends and they get to three letter blends by the end of the year. 
so that they're ready to read those short vowel sound words by the end of their four-year-old year, which goes along with having them ready to start really doing the more complex blended words when they get to kindergarten. So that, and along with the last thing that comes in your Rebecca kit is a set of mini alphabet flashcards. So these just go along with the illustrations, and these are the things that you'll be seeing in the book, the same um, example item. They have short vowel and long vowel sound cards. So you get those in your kit. And um, there's not really anything special about these. You can get letter cards, you know, at the dollar store, at, uh, the Target dollar spot right now has a lot of little kids learning stuff, but they're good to have on hand. You can put them out into words and the kids can sound them out for you. So you can think of different ways to use them. Um, so that is our Abeka kit. What do I add to the, to the Abeka kit for our four and five year olds? For our four and five year olds, I add in the book I've talked about on here before, the Teacher Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. And the nice thing about this book is this goes into teaching some of the um, special, um, kind of the special sounds and the exceptions to the English language that uh, can make reading challenging for some kids. So we work through this one. And again, it starts off with basic blends and scripted conversation between parent and student. And by the end of the book, they're reading more complex um, excerpts or stories and then you discuss them with questions and there's a writing section. For the writing section, we do our writing in a primary journal where the child can write the assignment for the day and draw an illustration above. That is what I use for my core curriculum. So I use Abeka and the teacher child to read in 100 easy lessons. One supplement that I add to that is the Explode the Code series. This is a great series of workbooks that's very phonics and blend based, and it's self-guided for the students. And they start with books called Get Ready for the Code, and they come in volumes A, B, and C. And then they start on a book called Explode the Code, and it's the first level, and they work up through, I think there's eight levels, and there's halves, so you can do one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and onward. Um, it's available from stores like Amazon and ChristianBook.com, and it's a really great supplement, especially if you have a child who really enjoys learning and wants more um, to work on during the day, and you've worked through your core curriculum and you're thinking, oh man, I wish I had something else to keep you busy. That's a really good one. It's also really good for kids that are struggling with reading and you're not quite sure how to help them. Have them sit and work through that each day. It's just firming up those um, blends and sounds and hopefully helping them learn to decode those words a little bit better with extra practice. Uh, again, it's not a very long or tedious thing. Each lesson shouldn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes in that Explode the Code. So that's another thing I like about it, just keeping school quick and fun and not drawn out. We have to remember that when we're homeschooling, it does not need to take 10 hours. It should not. Uh, with our younger kids, um, I've always had the goal of having it last between an hour and two hours. Um, I went to a homeschool convention and there was a mom there of a daughter who was grown at the time and had become this wonderful cello player. And people had always asked her how she had um, encouraged her daughter to practice the instrument so much. And she told us that her secret was giving her daughter the cello and letting her practice just enough and then having her put it away. So she just got a taste of it, but wasn't overwhelmed or uh, made sick of it. And she said that was a way for her daughter to just um, crave and want more of the music as opposed to being told, you're gonna practice an hour and you're gonna like it, which could easily turn a kid off of wanting to play the cello, I would imagine. I know I wouldn't care for that myself. So I think that that, that um, kind of approach can be used with education by just, giving the kids just the amount of education that they need and making it engaging and interesting and kind of leave them wanting more. Don't push so hard that you feel like you're forcing them to do too much in one day. Um, each kid is only able to focus for so long and hopefully as a parent you're able to recognize when your kid is engaged in the material and when they're learning and when they're done. And sometimes when they're done, all they need is a quick recess or a snack or a 
walk around the block just to get their, their mind reset. As they would in school, they'd have some sort of break. They wouldn't stay at the table all day. And sometimes they're just done for the day, and that's okay too. They can always do extra the next day, or if you want, they can do school on Saturday and Sunday for a half hour, and then their weekday schools can be shorter. So just a thought on that. But back to things you can do at home that are free for kindergarten or preschool. I have a few that I like to use. One of them is we have a Roku player and on there is a children's tab and within that are all of the leapfrog learning videos. Now these videos are nice because a lot of the information is set to song and it's fun and engaging for the kids. I like to have my daughter watch them when I need to get something done. So if I have a chore or a job or I need to work at something else or help one of the other kids, I'll ask her to watch a leapfrog video. That way I feel like the time isn't completely wasted. There's ones about letter factory, reading factory, and they're all letter sounds, counting and numbers, and different um, school learning topics. So those are really nice and they're free with the Roku player, so I, I appreciate that. Another thing that I use that's free is I use my library. And at the library, you can obviously go in and check out piles of books. Uh, right now with the lockdown, that's not necessarily an option. But one of the neat things that I like to use through the library is our library has um, audiobooks that you can check out through your smartphone or your computer device. Then you can listen to them as a family. And something that we really enjoy doing is putting on a book that everyone can enjoy over lunch or during an art project or just giving them a coloring sheet and listening to something. It can be just a basic novel with a family-friendly story. And then it's nice because everyone's hearing the same one and you can talk about it and it can kind of become part of the discussion in your family. So we've done this with books like Little House on the Prairie um, with A.A. A. Milan's um, Winnie the Pooh books. They're actually really beautiful books. Um, some people I think only know the cartoon but the books are really good too. There's so many family friendly books that you can listen to. And it's nice as a parent to have that audiobook because then you're not forced to sit at the table and um, be reading the entire time. You can be up preparing the lunch or helping other children and you can still be enjoying the story also. We've also done during the winter where we listen to a book together and everybody knits or does a handcraft, a crochet, a loom knitting for the younger kids. And it's a really good way, kind of a break in the day and a really fun story and the parent doesn't have to read and it's free because it's coming from the library. Our library also has subscriptions to various computer learning things such as ABC Mouse and those. And you can use those if you like. I have found that for younger kids they can kind of be a frustration but um, it is available and it's nice that it's free. On the library you also find a lot of free um, encyclopedias and reference books and they have Britannica Kids and different things so if you ever have a question of um, your child, oh what's this, how does it work, you can look it up on there and there's some really nice information. For free learning stuff, YouTube is a great one. There are so many good channels for learning and for songs. We do our um, for Bible, we read a story out of the kids' Bible, and then we go on and Saddleback Kids, which is a church, has animated videos about different Bible stories. They are very funny and short, and they're, the animation is cute, so the kids like them. So we will read the Bible story, watch the Saddleback Kids, and then we like to go on to um, Kings and Things, or King and Things. It's a YouTube channel, I'll link it in the description that does um, scripture memory verses and we've done a few of those as a family and it's really amazing because the kids are able to memorize an entire page of writing and it's all through song and they're able to just really um, understand it and it's really nice. So those are some of the resources we like to use off of YouTube. Uh, as far as tablet goes, one of the tablet programs that I like to use for writing is Handwriting Without Tears. If you have a tablet they have a great program where the kids can trace with their fingers and it's really good for beginning writers because it teaches the letter formation and it's pretty much hands-off for the parents as long as you just kind of keep an eye that they're on the correct program so that's one of the programs that I enjoy on there and I'm not sure how much that costs we bought it a long time ago with our second child and we've been able to use it with other children since so 
those are the products that um, we use for just a simple, fun homeschool. Uh, another thing I do outside of those curriculums is look up fun um, seasonal worksheets and craft projects at various online sites and then you can print them up for free. There are so many great resources for teaching and homeschooling online that you can use. Um, Teachers Pay Teachers has a free section if you're looking for free um, items that you can print up to keep your kids busy at home or to reinforce areas that they're struggling with and that's a really neat website. I used that when I was teaching but I also use it here at home with my own children. I really like, um, it's kind of off topic, but I love the novel unit studies that they have on there for older kids kind of ages second to sixth grade. There are some amazing products on there. So that's it from here. Those are things that we enjoy. Um, not everything that we do, but a, a good amount of it. Obviously in years where we're not on lockdown, another thing that I really do enjoy doing with my young kids is getting out of the house and seeing things. Whether that be going on vacation, going to museum, going on a field trip, getting out in the real world, and looking for those museum free days to do that. And through our library, you can get free passes to museums, art galleries, um, children's museums all around our area. So make sure to check for stuff like that. It doesn't really apply right at this second as um, at least where we're living, most things are still closed. But there is going to be a time where this passes and the world opens up again and we can enjoy those um, cultural experiences. And it's really neat to be able to go onto the library site, enter your number, click around, and get those passes for free. Um, it's a great time to register your child for a library card if, if you have more members of your family. We're a family of six and each library card can have two free tickets to these various places. So we're able to use uh, my card, my husband's card, and one of my kids' cards and we can get free tickets for the whole family to various museums which is, which is really nice. So with a big family, an outing to a museum can be um, easily $50 if not more. Some of the nicer museums it's a lot more. So. Anyways, that's it from here. I hope that if you're doing homeschooling for the first time, you're giving yourself grace, you're not being too hard on yourself. Um, just know and understand that what your kids need to learn is generally fairly simple. And if you can just set the example of enjoying school time, showing them that you read in your free time, enjoying learning, and just let them know that you care about them and you're teaching them because you love them, I think it's the first steps towards success as homeschoolers. Um, let me know what you think about your homeschooling so far and if you're using any products that you enjoy in the comments. And remember to like and subscribe for future videos. We'll be doing stuff about homeschooling, family life, recipes, gardening, uh, frugal living, all those sort of things. So thanks for joining us on Not Just Another Jessica and have a great day.